Hello everybody and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of our staff and everyone who is helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. It's such an honor that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church this day. I want to extend a special welcome to those who may be joining us for the very first time. We are so glad that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I want to encourage you especially to fill out our contact form. It is pinned right in the comment section. There's a place there for you to put, of course, all of your contact information. And there's a place there for you to put prayer requests that would go directly to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use that contact form today if it's your first time. If you've been worshiping with us a long time, please use Use that contact form today, particularly that prayer request section so that we can connect. We want to be able to connect with you, to encourage you in your life of faith, to invite you further into all the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church online and some things in person, in small groups, in service to our community and our world. So please use that contact form today. 
when we do gather for worship online, we promise together to be a blessing and to participate. And what that means is that we're going to participate fully in this online worship service. I encourage you to put aside other uh, devices, other distractions, maybe light a candle to help you focus, and then really just center in on this time of worship that we're sharing together. When it's time to sing, go ahead and stand up and sing. When we're praying, pray. When we're listening, listening, whatever it is that we're doing in worship, just go ahead and do it and fully participate in this service today. And then we promise together to be a blessing, and that means that Every way that we are together today, we are going to bless people in the way that we're in the comment section together, in the way we're maybe joining with people in our household in worship, in the way that we're just extending this worship out into the community. All of it, we want to be a blessing. I invite you now to center yourself in that to open your hearts, your minds, your ears to all that is with us in this time of worship and join in this time of centering music. Good morning, I'm Steve Dunker. I've been a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for several years and a member of the Finance Committee and the Welcome and Inclusion Team. Joining me this morning is Jeff. He's been joining us for online worship since early this spring and is looking forward to meeting all of you when we get together for in-person worship. When we come together for worship online, we're not just people watching a video, but people worshiping together in lots of places. Let's share Jesus' love and peace with one another right now with the people you're with, wherever you are, with the people online, and with those in the online comments. Peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Larry Burton. And I'm Ann Burton. Peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, we're the Dion family. My name is Justine. This is my husband, Curtis, and these are our children, Meredith and Aaron. Peace be with you. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Janet Schmidt, the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join me in singing When Morning Gilds the Skies.
Good morning and happy Valentine's Day. My name is Gay Seibert and my husband Rich and I have been with Douglas for about eight years in various and assorted um, committees serving the church. Please join me today in our opening prayer. Light of God, shine upon us as we worship together in many different places. We come to you as we are in our strength and in our weakness. Bless our world in its all its beauty and its pain with your Spirit's redeeming power. As you transfigured Jesus on the mountaintop, transform us as we worship you today. Envelop us with your Spirit that we may shine Christ's light into the world longing for healing and peace. Open our eyes to see Jesus and one another with transfigured eyes and hearts. Amen. Oh my goodness, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your devices, your screens, so that you can see everything and hear everything that's going on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now, everybody, for small talk. Good morning, everyone, and happy Valentine's Day. I am Miss Lori. We have a special guest, Mortimer, our, our moose or reindeer thing who's reminding us about the day. And Laud the lamb and his assistant, Cohen. Don't know what Cohen's wearing. I don't know. It's cold out. <laughs> but we're here and it's Valentine's Day. You might be thinking, what does church have to do with Valentine's Day? Well, Laud has assured me that he can help us with that. Is it something in here, Laud? Something in here, okay, okay, okay. Do you wanna get it out or, or do you need some help there? You got it? Oh, he has a Valentine for his Mortimer, that's fabulous. Let's see what it says. Oh, yes! We love because he first loved us. That's from John chapter 4, 19. God loves us no matter what. That's what's beautiful. Even when we do things that he probably doesn't like, he still loves us, right? Yeah. And he expects, expects us to give that same love in return. So today on Valentine's Day, Try to tell somebody in your family, maybe a grown-up, maybe even a sibling or a pet or a neighbor, remind them that you love him, just like God loves you and all of us. So have a happy Valentine's Day. Hopefully, maybe you get a little chocolate today, and we will see you next week. Love you guys. Bye. As we prepare to receive our Bible reading today, please join with Karis and me in singing, Open Our Eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, and say that we Hi guys, Kevin Douglas Avenue here. Good to see everybody. It won't be long, it sounds like. It won't be long. Hang in there. Today's reading from the Bible is Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Let's open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through the reading. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. 
Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Good morning. Please join members of the praise band as we sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. today. I usually wear very strong contact lenses, but my eye doctor has instructed me to not wear my contact lenses for a little while. I'm healing up from an eye injury, so out have come my glasses. I've worn contact lenses for the better part of 40 years because I really like the way they correct my vision, but I do feel very blessed that I have glasses and that I can have these to wear right now. My glasses are really quite thick. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, I really can't see much of anything without my contact lenses or without glasses. Now, wearing glasses has its downsides, I do have to say. My peripheral vision is really not so great with the glasses. They get smudged pretty easily. When I wear a face mask, they fog up. When I open the oven door, they fog up. When I go from the outside to the inside in this incredibly cold weather, they fog up. I guess really they tend to fog up quite a bit. But they also have some upsides. They are a cute accessory. 
I can pull them down to peer at my husband when he does something dumb. And when I wake up, I can just throw them on and off I'm going. And of course, most importantly, they make it possible for me to see. My glasses help me to see the world more clearly, to see the details and to see what actually is there in front of me and not what simply appears to be kind of fuzzy, shapeless blurs. And this is a big deal. I know those of you who wear glasses and contact lenses, you're right there with me. But you know, even people with excellent 2020 eyesight don't always see very clearly because people tend to only see what they want to see. This is so common that psychologists have a word for it, pareidolia. This is the effect that causes us to see faces in windows of houses or to make shapes out of constellations or to see animal shapes in clouds. Human minds force meaningful images upon our world. We literally see what we want to see. So it takes concentration and discipline to make sense of new things, new learning, or new insights that don't fit with what it is we expect. Sometimes we actually have to work at seeing clearly. The Bible is filled with stories about people learning to see more clearly. This is a common image that conveys a powerful metaphor for spiritual understanding. When we enter into a relationship with God, we begin to see the world around us with God's eyes. We begin to see our world and our neighbors as God sees them and not just as they appear. Living with God, loving God, being shaped and formed in the image of Jesus means that we begin seeing things as they really are, not just as they seem. Our Bible story that Kevin shared with us today is a great example of beginning to see clearly. Jesus invites three of his followers, Peter, James, and John, to accompany him up to the top of a mountain. And while they are there, Jesus is transfigured before their eyes into a being of blinding and pure white light. Hence the name of this Bible story, the Transfiguration. In the original Greek, Jesus is metamorphosized. His form is changed. The three disciples, they don't know what to make of this, and they are further dumbfounded to see Jesus talking with Moses and the prophet Elijah. And then they hear a great voice proclaim, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. The disciples thought they knew who Jesus was. They thought they knew what they should see when looking at Jesus. Jesus was a teacher, a rabbi, a leader who might provoke political action, a friend, a prophet, a healer, a miracle worker. But to see Jesus as the Son of God, what is this? The disciples just didn't know how to understand him. And I think many of us today struggle to make sense of Jesus as our human teacher and friend and the divine Son of God. Seeing the world as it really is sometimes requires us to let go of our regular ways of seeing and asks us to put on our metaphorical transfiguration glasses. These transfiguration glasses would allow us to see the world and our neighbors as God sees them, to see beyond the limits of our simple human understandings. Sometimes putting on our transfiguration glasses helps us to see challenging and troubling parts of our world. This year, our congregation has been, uh, begun an intentional journey of wrestling with and acknowledging the systems of racism and white supremacy that surround us. For our people of color, these systems are really plain to see. But our white folks don't always see them. We don't see the subtle and unintentional bias or even really the overt and intentional bias that permeates our social, financial, educational, or justice systems. We don't see how the patterns and organizations created during times of intentional racial segregation can continue to benefit white folk and hinder people of color. Many times in our conversations, I've heard from our white folks that they just didn't see it, didn't understand it, didn't know it was still a problem. 
Looking at racism and white supremacy with our transfiguration glasses means seeing ourselves, our society, and our church the way that God sees us. And this may not be very flattering. We know that we are not yet the people that God created us to be. But our transfiguration glasses help us see clearly. And our love of and following of Jesus empowers and inspires us with the courage to change. This change may be uncomfortable and risky, but the first step is seeing clearly. Sometimes putting on our transfiguration glasses gives us an encouraging new perspective on ourselves and the people around us. I'm always amazed and inspired in the transfiguration story of Jesus with God's voice proclaiming that Jesus is the beloved. God shows up in this transfiguration moment to make sure that everyone knows that Jesus is loved by God. But God's love doesn't just stop with Jesus. The most amazing miracle of the Christian faith is our belief that each and every person is a beloved child of God, that God's beloved children doesn't just mean Jesus and some holy saints, but it includes each and every one of us, everyone, even you and me, Every person is a beloved, precious, cherished, amazing child of God. How much would we be changed if we used our transfiguration glasses to see every person around us as a beloved child of God? If we saw every stranger in the supermarket, every bad driver, every politician, every person experiencing homelessness, every immigrant, every addict, every enemy soldier, or every incarcerated criminal as a beloved child of God. What if we used our transfiguration glasses to see ourselves as a beloved child of God? Most of us look at ourselves with harsh, bright magnification, picking out every flaw, every mistake, every hurt, and every harm. Too many times we see ourselves as unworthy of love, friendship, or forgiveness. But what if we take off the two critical lenses of our poor self-esteem and we put on our transfiguration glasses? Then we can see ourselves as God sees us. God sees each and every one of us as beloved, precious, cherished, amazing. God doesn't look away from the things that aren't right in our lives. Instead, God looks right at us, faults included, and loves us. God doesn't pretend or ignore who we are. God just loves us because that is who God is. And we are beloved by God because that is who we are. Sometimes seeing the world through transfiguration glasses is kind of crazy. But thanks be to God for seeing us this way as God's own beloved children. And thanks be to God for Jesus to help us see each and every person in that exact same way. Amen. As we join in our time of prayer together, please join us in singing, Open Our Eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we
Good morning. I'm Nancy Vereen, lay leader at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'd like to invite you to join me in prayer. And if you have any prayers of your own that you would like to be lifted up, please put them in the contact form or in the comments, and we'll be sure to get those passed on to the pastors. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing. Yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose compassion illumines the world. Transform us into the likeness of the love of Christ, who renewed our humanity, so that we may share into his divinity the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. O oh God, we offer up our prayers to you. Be with all of us and those who surround us. Give us help, kind hearts, and appreciation for all the blessings that you have bestowed on us. Be with those in need. Help them to find warmth in these cold winter days and food to nourish them and their families. Be with those having medical procedures this week. Calm their nerves and give the doctors, nurses, and medical staff the skills for perfect healing. Dear God, be with those who are grieving. May they find comfort and peace. Be with our country and our leaders. Give them the wisdom and courage to make good decisions for all Americans. Be with us this week as we go out into the world. Transform our lives into your image. Make us prophets of your glory that we may lead others to you. It is in your glorious name that we pray. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time when I get to invite you into our spiritual practice of generosity. Your financial giving makes such a difference in the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I encourage you to continue giving of your finances, your spirit, your time, your prayers into our ministries. It makes all the difference in the world and it makes it possible for us to extend these ministries into our community and into our world in powerful ways. You can give using our online giving portal. The link for that is right in our comment section. You can give by setting up automatic giving with your financial institution or with ours. If you need assistance with that, just contact us in the church office. And of course, you can send in your checks right to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and we put those to work immediately into ministry, into our community. I want to encourage you, if you of course have not done so, to fill out that contact form, to put your prayer requests right in there so that we can pray with you and connect with you in ministry and in all those different ways. And then it is my pleasure to welcome for our mission moment, Chantel Corey, who is the executive director of the Midwest Mission Distribution Center. Our youth group is going to be doing a service project at the Midwest Mission Distribution Center on Saturday, February 20th. That's coming up quickly. And we get uh, to have this wonderful word right now from Chantel Corey. Hi, my name is Chantel Corey, and I'm the executive director of Midwest Mission just outside of Chatham, Illinois, very close to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. At Midwest Mission, we specialize in health, education, disaster relief, and micro business supplies. We take in and make kits in, in many of these areas, but we also take in bikes and sewing machines, repair them, and send those out um, in the United States into developing countries. We take old bleacher wood and turn that into desks that will seat three to four children in an international schoolroom, many of which have nowhere to sit um, and now have a place that they can sit comfortably and be more attuned to what is happening and can increase their learning day. 
Um, we specialize in health and education so much because we believe that those are the two things that people need to have in place to really start getting their way out of poverty. We're all about hope and empowerment here at Midwest Mission. So our mission is that we take the resources of God's people and turn them into humanitarian relief around the world and around the corner. There are many ways to be involved in Midwest Mission. There's lots of at-home projects that you can do um, by going to midwestmission.org. You can follow us on Facebook or engage with us on social media or sign up for our weekly newsletter where you can hear all the great God news that's happening here at Midwest Mission. But we're also open to volunteers here on site. We've never closed because we are disaster response and God called us to come and stand up in a huge way in 2020. We sent out four times what we normally send out in a year, which meant we sent out $10.8 million worth of in-kind supplies around the world and around the corner last year. And that happened with 70% less volunteers here on site to make that happen. So we did with 500 volunteers what we normally do with 1,800 volunteers. And many of our normal ways of getting supplies dried up, but we found new and creative ways with God's help and guidance and ever surrounding presence and protection that made this ministry flourish in 2020. So we invite you, especially the youth, from Douglas Avenue who are scheduled to come out on February 20th of this month to contact Miss Lori and come out and see the many volunteer opportunities we have that you can engage with. And you know what I've seen more than anything throughout this pandemic is that when we focus on helping others, we get so much more out of that. And so if you wanna raise your spirits, come out to Midwest Mission or get involved in one of our activities, um, we have many, many projects, whether you're skilled at sewing or woodworking, or you're like me and not skilled at anything, I have a job for you that we can get that filled. So thank you so much for your time this morning, and we hope to see you soon. Please join me in singing, Christ Whose Glory Fills the Skies. Thank you so much for joining in this wonderful time of worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been an honor to have you join in, and I just pray that this experience has been meaningful and powerful, uplifting for you, and that you will continue to join with us in online worship, with service in our community, in small groups, and in some in-person worship opportunities that are upcoming. We love you, and we love to be able to connect with you. So thank you so much for joining with us in this time. As you go out into your day, go with your transfiguration glasses on, seeing others and the world as God sees us. Go knowing that you are that beloved, precious child of God, that Jesus loves you completely, that Jesus sees you in that way and empowers you for powerful ministry, and that the Holy Spirit goes right with you. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.